Firefox hardening is becoming less of a thing for two reasons and not really for the reasons you probably think and why this is actually ultimately a massive win. And for the record, I am no longer actively hardening any kind of Firefox anymore. It's just not part of my workflow. I think back to the days where hardening Firefox was adjusting 20 different things in the about config menu and installing 10 different extensions and then configuring things and all sites breaking. Really the end result of Firefox hardening isn't dead and it's very alive, but I think that's why the awful aspects of us needing to actively harden it are dying because of two core things that are happening. So the first reason is just straight up outright we have better options than having to install Firefox and manually harden it. And the reason for that is because we have so many great browser options. So if we look here on the techler.tech slash resources page, all of these browsers are doing some incredible things just by default. So the Tor browser, as we all know, is probably one of the best browsers from a fingerprinting perspective, and it's designed to blend users together. And this kind of fingerprint resistance was one of the reasons why people hardened Firefox, but that ironically made everyone stand out because it seemed like everyone hardened Firefox in a slightly different way. So this kind of perk was reserved just for the Tor browser, which for the record did exist before um, when people were hardening Firefox a lot, but um, that came at the expense of having to go through the Tor network. But that's why I'm so excited for Molvad Browser, because Molvad Browser perfectly fits in there, because what if you want to have essentially the benefits of the Tor browser without having to use the Tor network? Now, that's where Molvad came in and said, we're going to develop the Molvad Browser. Now, again, the Molvad Browser is an official collaboration with the Tor browser. So this isn't some, like, fork run by two people who are just doing their best to keep this afloat. This is actually, like partially maintained by the Tor browser project. So if you're someone who trusts the Tor browser and the Tor project, which I have no reason to tell you why you shouldn't, um, they're also helping out Molvad, which also has just a spotless reputation in the VPN community. And the cool thing is that if you're using Molvad VPN along with Molvad browser, you're actually getting some of the benefits that you might be getting by using the Tor browser, because at least you're also getting some of that IP protection as well. Though it's not again through the anonymity Tor network, it's still there. And also, it's worth mentioning that projects like LibreWolf are still here, and they still are doing things to pretty much make a pre-hardened Firefox a thing that you can do right now. And even if you're not going for the Firefox stuff, Brave, I know we just covered how Brave is actually reducing some of their protections, but Brave out of the box does a lot of things that Firefox does. Perhaps not as good as a hardened Firefox, but even if you look here at privacytest.org, you can see a lot of the areas where Brave actually competes um, with Firefox. Um, and actually, the better comparison in my book would be Brave versus LibreWolf or Molvad. So you can take a look to see how Brave compares to LibreWolf and Molvad, and I think it's overall not quite as strong, but that you can tell they're not too far off from each other. I do want to mention, even if you don't touch a single Firefox setting, if you just install Firefox and install uBlock Origin, Mozilla's actually taken care of a lot of things in Firefox now. It's not that it doesn't make Firefox hardening still beneficial for a lot of people. It's just that I think that they've really closed the gap um, significantly in the last five years or so because they've enabled so many great things by default that used to have to be done through extensions or they used to have to be done through the about config menu. So also props to Mozilla. So to summarize that first reason real quick the options are just straight up better if you want something that's like a pre-hardened firefox to avoid the whole process of even having to touch hardening firefox you now have so many amazing browser options that all have just been like they're just incredible so um this already kind of eliminates the need for almost like I would say a huge majority of people to even have to touch any hardened Firefox settings. And this is actually where I draw the line. So I draw the line here, which is I just use Molvad browser, Tor browser, and Brave. And that's my browser workflow. And I already talked about this in some other videos. And so for me, I no longer touch any kind of like, I need to harden Firefox stuff. And that's because the work's already done for me out of the box. And the cool thing with these browsers is that most people who are using them are using the same exact settings. So you actually are able to blend a little bit with the crowd from a fingerprint perspective, which is kind of the the point of browsers like Tor Browser and Molvad Browser. Now there's still a second reason though if you're somebody who still actively uh, hardens your own Firefox, why this is still better and I would still say like the traditional hardening Firefox is kind of dying and it's because there's still better ways of doing it nowadays which is things like Arc and Fox which are just fantastic projects. So nowadays you probably won't be adjusting. I mean I think it's kind of silly for you to go in and manually be adjusting everything by yourself when something like Arc and Fox exists which is pretty much a drag and drop file way of hardening 
Firefox. So it's kind of insane, like just the, the amazing options we have right now. And Arkenfox has just made the headache of hardening Firefox just not really a headache. If you watched our newest Firefox hardening guide, actually pretty much all of it was using Arkenfox. It's really cringe to go back and watch things like the Go Incognito Firefox hardening guide, which is outdated and pretty much goes through all this insane stuff that like you really don't need to do anymore. So I really recommend going through the Arc and Fox wiki if you want to see the best ways of hardening Firefox. And this is actually why they reference our Techler video on this Arc and Fox guide, because we pretty much just copied um, their wiki. So thanks for referencing us, Arc and Fox. That's really cool. Now this is relevant to you because if you're somebody who's looking for a way to harden Firefox or you're trying to take your privacy and security to the next level, um, it's worth knowing that you can actually get very far today with just out of the box options and you don't have to take all this time uh, to do things. And this is an epic win for everybody because it's much easier and much more accessible protection. And the entry point to a privacy focused browser has fallen drastically over the last several years. And that's a big win for everybody because now you can actually you know, back then I would tell people there's no way I'm ever going to recommend a hardened Firefox instance to any one of my friends or family, but I might recommend them brave. But nowadays, like I still probably wouldn't recommend Mulvad browser, but I'd still like that's not something outrageous to suggest. You know, I can say, hey, here's Mulvad browser. You can just install it and use it. And you might stumble on some things here and there that are a little weird, but they're probably not going to have to touch anything in Mulvad browser and they can still use the web perfectly fine. And aside from just the ease of use, um, we as a community just have so many more amazing options that excel in slightly different areas that we didn't have access to just five years ago. So I think this is nothing but a win for the community. And for me, I made this video because I was going, wait, I feel like Firefox hardening is just not really a thing anymore. Um, and I think that's overall a good thing because hardening Firefox was not something that we can expect everybody to be doing. And for, uh, there's there's no loss to this. You're, you can still go and manually harden your own Firefox. No one's taken that option away from you. Um, and for the people who don't want to do that, myself included, you now have these amazing options that are pretty much just as good and in some ways better than a hardened Firefox, depending on what you're going for and what your goals are. So yeah, the act of hardening Firefox in my eyes is kind of dying. And I think that's a great thing because we now have much better alternatives and we have much better ways of doing it that pretty much take away all of that brute force work that we had to previously put into hardening a Firefox. And again, just final shout outs to like Tor Project, um, Mulvad team, Brave Team, Mozilla even, um, LibreWolf, uh, Ark and Fox developer, like really everybody who's been like really leading this, uh, just fantastic job. I'm super happy to see this and um, I hope everyone here can appreciate this as well because this is a big win for the community. That's it for this video. If you like these kind of videos, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash techlore. It really helps us out and uh, like I'm trying to get us to break 200 patrons and so um, you can help us do that. Um, it'd be a huge help in getting this content out and we're trying to really uh, push out more content this year versus last year and so if you can help us out by joining our Patreon or we have lots of other ways to support us on our support page on our website, including things like Monero um, and LibraPay and there's just, just so many great ways to support us. Um, and yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time on TechLore.